السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے لیٹ اس لرن اباؤٹ جیومیٹریکل آپٹکس ان دس لیسن وی ہیو ٹو ڈسکس امپورٹنٹ ٹو پراپرٹیز آف لائٹ دے آر ریفلیکشن آف لائٹ اینڈ ریفریکشن آف لائٹ ان ریفلیکشن آف لائٹ وی ہیو ٹو لرن اباؤٹ the reflection in plane mirror and also reflection in spherical mirrors we know spherical mirrors mean curved mirrors for example concave mirror convex mirror so we have to learn about the reflection of light through this mirror and refraction of light in this section we have to consider the refraction in lenses especially we are going to discuss about this topic in this lesson reflection of light to see an object to see an object light is necessary so we can see a luminous object directly because a luminous object or luminous objects that emit light what is luminous object objects which emit light so to see a luminous object when the light rays directly when the light rays directly reach our eye we can see that luminous object easily but to see a non luminous object what is non luminous object non luminous objects mean objects which do not emit light so to see a non luminous object the light should be refracted reflected on that body and it should be reach our eye so in a dark place we cannot see any objects because light is required to see a visual vis uh, visual sensation so we can easily see a luminous object because it's emit light but to see a non luminous object the light should be reflected on that object and it should be our eye then only we can see any objects so according to the emission of light we can classify the object as luminous objects and non luminous objects so what are the examples for luminous object sun lighted bulb lighted candle so the, these are some examples for luminous objects what are the examples for non luminous objects moon houses bricks animals birds etc so you should remember the lighted candle lighted bulb are luminous objects but candle bulb those are non luminous objects according to the light passes through the objects we can classify the objects as transparent objects translucent objects and opaque objects so what is transparent objects transparent objects mean the objects that allow to pass the light through that object or light passes through the objects are called as transparent objects so you can see the picture there is a glass through that glass we can see the candle lighted candle clearly so glass is a transparent object so light passes through the glass clearly but what is translucent objects translucent objects mean light passes through some materials but Uh, with irregular changes of direction but it is impossible to see the objects on the other side clearly so the type of objects are known as translucent object so you know the you can see the object but it's not clear due to the changes of direction of light so for example we can say a uh, tissue paper decorated glass and greasing paper these are some examples of translucent objects then what is opaque object opaque objects mean objects uh, through which does uh, does not pass the light or object through which light does not pass uh, through that object for example we can say wood uh, what else mm, plastic like a uh, brick like that 
uh, that is opaque object that means light does not pass through that object so here i have uh, given some examples for transparent translucent objects and opaque objects examples for transparent objects glass polythene colorless water translucent objects tissue paper oil paper decorated glass opaque objects stones bricks books woods like that we can give examples to learn about the reflection we have to know some scientific terms so first one light ray normally a light ray it is indicated by a straight line with an arrow head so this is indicated by light ray beams of light what is light beam light beam means the collection of light ray or in another words we can say a bundle of light ray that is known as beams of light so you know there are three types of light beams parallel light beam this is divergent light beam and convergent light beam so parallel light beam mean a bundle of parallel light rays form a parallel light beam you know each and every light ray parallel to each other so that is parallel light beam in convergent light beam you can see there are three uh, light rays so that bundle of light rays that meet at a certain point these three rays are meet at a certain point so if it is meet a certain point if light rays are meet at certain point we call it as a convergent light beam then what is divergent light beam a bundle of light rays you can see the bundle of light rays here so bundle of light rays that travel away from the certain point that travel away from the certain point so we call it as a divergent light beam so these are the types of light beam reflection on plane mirror first let's consider about the way light incident perpendicular to the plane mirror is reflected now you can see ab ab that is a incident ray mn that is mn is a plane mirror mn is plane mirror you know plane mirror mean it is indicated by a line and other side should be uh, marked or colored so when the light ray incident on plane mirror we can say ab that is incident ray but you know you can see clearly ab incident on plane mirror perpendicular to the mirror surface perpendicular to the mirror surface so and reflected ray so you have to know when the light ray incident on plane mirror perpendicular to the mirror surface the reflected ray reflected ray is indicated by ba so when the light ray incident on plane mirror perpendicular to the mirror surface the reflected ray travel along the same path reflected ray travel back along the same path so this is the way of reflection on plane mirror when the light ray incident perpendicular to the mirror surface now you can see the reflection of light ray from a plane mirror but it's not perpendicular it's form a certain angle you can see the angle is mn here mn is plane mirror ab that is indicated by incident ray and you know bx bx that is the normal that we have drawn a line perpendicular to the mirror surface so ab ab that is incident ray bc that is reflected ray and the bx that is the normal at the point of incidence and then we can consider the i that mean abx this angle as a angle of incidence and cbx that is this angle so that is angle of reflection so we have to remember we have to consider the angle of incidence and angle of reflection 
with the incident ray and normal and reflected ray and normal so the, this is incident ray a b is incident ray b c is reflected ray a b x that is angle of incident and c b x that is angle of reflection so let's consider the how the reflection occur when it is reflected on a plane mirror by forming an angle is yes, now let us consider the laws of reflection you know the reflection occurs in plane mirror on plane mirror or in on a curved mirror it is according to the laws of reflection now let us consider the laws of reflection so in your textbook they have given the first law that is the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all lie on the same plane that is the first law you know there are two we can consider the two planes that is a horizontal and vertical so when we doing this act activity or experiment in a horizontal plane you can get the incident ray reflected ray and the normal in the same plane so that is the first law of reflection and the second law that is the angle of incident you know angle of incident mean the angle between incident ray and the normal this is normal so the angle of incident that is equal to angle of reflection so normal and the reflected ray so that is the angle of reflection so the second law is angle of incident that is equal to angle of reflection normally we are indicate the angle of incident as i and angle of reflection that is as r so imagine we will we'll discuss in reflection uh, on the curved surface also but here uh, i have given a picture even in a on a curved surface also reflection occur according to the laws of reflection later we'll discuss uh, briefly about the uh, reflection on curved surface the formation of an image of a point object by a plane mirror mn is the plane mirror and the side that is the reflecting surface and point object o that is a uh, kept in front of plane mirror now oa and oc are the two rays which propagating from the object towards the plane mirror but you have to remember oa and oc are not only the two rays that which uh, that propagate through the point o there may be several rays that passes through the point object o and reflected on mirror surface but here we have consider only oa and oc rays now when the oa incident on this plane mirror according to the laws of reflection you know it will reflect uh, it will form the reflected ray that is ab and when the oc incident on plane mirror you can get the reflected ray cd and according to the laws of reflection now if you connect these two rays because you know the image in plane mirror image in plane mirror it will formed behind the plane mirror so when we connect when we connect these two rays a b and c d the place where it is intersect together that is the place of image formation so om is the object distance and mi is the image distance so this is the way of forming image on a plane mirror image formation on plane mirror it is easy to draw the image of an object uh, when we keep an object in front of plane mirror first we have to draw the image after that we can get the uh, light rays and that is the easy way to draw the uh, image formed by plane mirror so you can uh, indicate the incident ray and after that a reflected rays and you know the properties of image formed by a plane mirror so first you have to decide the place of uh, image formation and after that you, you can continue the ray diagram 
Now, what are the properties of image formed by a plane mirror? That is, image is erect and upright. You can see the image of this uh, ball. So, image is erect and upright. And image formed is laterally inverted. Laterally inverted means if you touch the right side of your body, the image will touch the left side of the image body. So, that means image uh, formed is laterally inverted. And both object and image are same distance away from the mirror. So, you are, uh, the distance between object and the distance between image that is same. And object and image are of same size. Image formed is a virtual image. Virtual image means it is not a real image because we can get the real image on the screen only. So, behind the mirror we cannot get the real image. So, if you get the image behind the mirror, that is virtual image. So, these are the properties of image formed by a plane mirror.